in the Galapagos, they have some pretty strict rules about protecting their very delicate ecosystem that they have there. So one of the rules they have for boats that are coming into the Galapagos is that you have to have a clean bottom. We're waiting for the tide to go out and we're going to take exit only right up on the beach. And as the tide goes out, we'll jump out of the boat and be there in the water scrubbing away and scraping away and getting the bottom clean. Some jobs are big, some jobs are small, and some are medium. This was a big job, bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, the keel sunk in the sand a little bit, but it didn't keep us from doing our job. And uh, at about midnight, the high tide is going to come in and float us off the beach. I hope. If it doesn't float us off the beach, I'm going to be really disappointed. This is an engine intake cover. We've cleaned all through holes and there were barnacles and stuff underneath because they just grow. So all clean now, and when the diver from the Galapagos checks it, he's gonna give us a thumbs up and let us into the country. At about 7 a.m., I heard a loud noise, bam, that sounded like a gunshot, and I thought, what is that? So I ran out on deck and I looked at the top of the mast and our code zero was now untethered partially from the top of the mast. And so something bad happened up there, and I don't know if it was a shackle that broke or a block that came apart, but when we hauled the boat yesterday, uh, the starboard bow was hogging down a little bit, and it probably did a lot of static loading on the block. And I'm guessing that the block failed at the top oh of the mast. Oh my goodness, what is that? This is what we call a broken block. It's got a swivel uh, that a shackle is connected to a U-bolt up there and clearly there was a malfunction. It uh, snapped. Look at that. It's, it's called crevice corrosion on stainless steel. You never know how strong stainless steel is because a crack will develop in there then suddenly it'll fail dramatically. Thank God it did it here uh, in the Spirito Santo because we can fix this. If this had happened on the way to Galapagos, this would have been really, really, really inconvenient. Yeah, I would have been up the mast with the boat going like that, and uh, yeah, this would have been a mess. We have found the source of our problem. The U-bolt held on this ramp, which is great. The shackle held, which is great, but the block snapped. So. Just gonna take this off, put on this new block, and we should be in business. A side benefit of this unanticipated task is that we trimmed the rope and moved where our shackle was attached in order to change points that it was rubbing on the pulley before. So it's good, it just freshens up the rope and the stresses on it, where it comes out of the mast and pulley, pulley. So these things are under so much tension for so long. It's always good to freshen them up. You guys excited to go offshore? Yep. This is going to be your first big Pacific crossing. Uh huh. We are prepared. We're going to have stuff to do yep. every day. And Joss won't be a polywog anymore soon. Mm -hmm. She'll be a shellback. I worked on an expert level Sudoku for the first time. It took me all of my watch time and I had to get up this morning and finish it, but I made it. I won. Hey. That was, that's the first time I ever did that. I'm debating whether doing uh, another one. It's uh, it basically it's taking me two days. <laughs> When 
I woke up this morning, I took a look up at the top of the mast and I couldn't believe my eyes. Our static electricity dissipator lightning rod was bent over 90 degrees flat and not only that, our wind anemometer was no longer working. So in the middle of the night, sometime when we were moving along at uh, eight knots, a bird must have slammed into our lightning rod uh, because he couldn't see it, it was so dark, and bent it over so now it's horizontal. So David decided to make friends with the birds today. He was out here talking to them and filming them and oh, isn't it this all great? And so we had about eight or ten booby birds sitting on the bow of the boat and they didn't want to leave. We chew them away and they just come back. So now we have resorted to uh, find some bags here and we're going to see if this is going to deter them. I have my doubt. Oh. <laughs> what is he trying to land on my head? He's coming head? back. He's here again. <laughs> <laughs>